What are some common misconceptions about IEPs? Welcome to another video in the IEP questions series. If you're new here or you're wondering what an IEP really is, they are individualized education programs, short IEPs, used in the American public school system to support students who have special educational needs. While these programs are essential for many students, there are numerous misconceptions about IEPs that can make it challenging for parents, teachers, and administrators to ensure that students receive the best possible education. In this video, we will clear up some of these misconceptions and provide you with the right information so that you can make informed decisions about your child's education. Let's start with the first and most popular misconception. An IEP is only for students with intellectual disabilities. This isn't the full picture. An IEP is actually a versatile tool designed to help a broad range of students who face challenges in learning, not just those with intellectual disabilities. Whether it's dyslexia, ADHD, autism, physical limitations, or emotional struggles, an IEP can provide the extra support needed for academic success. So, the correct understanding is that an IEP is available to any student whose disability impacts their ability to learn regardless of the type of disability. Moving on to the next widely held misconception. IEPs are only academic. This idea falls short of capturing the full scope of what an IEP can offer. Far from being limited to academics, IEPs also address functional, social, and emotional needs. They can offer a range of additional supports like occupational and speech therapy, social skills lessons, and behavioral help. For instance, a student with autism may benefit from an IEP that includes not only academic help, but also social skills training and speech therapy. Similarly, a student with physical disability might need an IEP that provides a wheelchair ramp, a personal assistant, and adapted assignments. So the correct understanding is that IEPs are holistic plans tailored to the individual needs of the student, whether those are academic, functional, or emotional. An IEP team collaborates to identify these needs and create a flexible plan that's reviewed and updated annually. If you suspect your child might benefit from an IEP, a conversation with their teacher or principal is a good first step to initiate the evaluation process. Now, let's tackle another common misconception. If a child is doing well academically, they don't need an IEP. This is misleading because an IEP isn't just about grades or academic performance, like I said earlier. It's about helping students with various needs, which can extend beyond the classroom. Take a child with ADHD, for instance. They may be keeping up with their studies, but struggle with focus or organization. An IEP could offer supports like a fidget toy or extra time on tests to help them succeed. Likewise, a student with a physical disability might excel academically, but need help with mobility or daily tasks. Their IEP could include a ramp, a personal assistant, or task modifications to help them participate fully in school life. So the correct understanding is that an IEP is a comprehensive plan aimed at meeting the diverse needs of the student, whether those needs are academic, functional, or emotional. If you believe your child might benefit from an IEP, even if they're excelling academically, don't hesitate to speak with their teacher or principal to start the evaluation process. Moving on, you might wonder how often an IEP is updated, which leads to the misconception an IEP is a one-time event. This isn't true. IEPs are living plans, reviewed at least yearly as required by federal law, and more often if the student's needs change. For example, a child struggling with reading in first grade might need different help by third grade. The IEP team will regularly assess progress and adapt the plan as needed. So the correct understanding is that an IEP is an ongoing process, not a one-off event. It ensures that the student's unique needs are continually met, 
and adapted over time. As a parent, it's crucial to be engaged in this process, attending meetings and giving feedback. You can even request extra meetings if you have concerns about your child's progress. Next, you might wonder if you are alone in ensuring the IEP is followed, leading to the misconception teachers don't need to follow the IEP. This is incorrect. Teachers are legally required to follow the IEP and failure to do so can result in legal action against the school. In essence, the IEP is a legal roadmap that teachers must follow to support the student's learning needs. If a teacher isn't following the plan, you have the right to call a meeting with the IEP team or file a complaint. So, the accurate view is that teachers are obligated to adhere to the IEP, regardless of their personal opinions. As a parent, it's essential to know your rights and advocate for your child. This means actively participating in IEP meetings and reviews and speaking up if you have any concerns. Moving on, you might think as a parent, you're just a spectator in the IEP process. This leads to a misconception number six. Parents have no say in an IEP. Well, this is far from the truth. Parents are integral members of the IEP team and their input is not only welcomed, but essential. Next up, you could think all schools are the same when it comes to IEP services. However, that's another misconception. Schools can differ significantly in resources and while they must offer a free, appropriate public education, the specifics can vary. As I said earlier, understanding what an IEP involves is crucial, which brings us to misconception number eight. Private schools must provide IEPs. The fact is private schools aren't mandated to offer IEPs under federal law, although some might offer accommodations voluntarily. You might also worry that an IEP will label your child, leading to misconception number nine. An IEP will stigmatize my child. Rest assured, an IEP is a confidential document that isn't shared widely. Its main goal is to provide tailored support to help your child succeed in school. There are also strong privacy regulations in place to ensure that your child's information is protected and only shared with those directly involved in their education. The right conception here is that an IEP serves as a secure and constructive tool specifically aimed at aiding your child's educational journey without stigmatizing them. Privacy laws safeguard the information, ensuring it's used solely for your child's benefit. Lastly, some think once the IP is set, the school takes over completely. Misconception number 10. Once an IP is in place, the school will take care of everything. While schools must implement the IP, ongoing parental involvement is key for adapting the plan to evolving needs. Understanding IPs can empower parents, teachers, and administrators to collaboratively support students with special needs. The first step towards breaking down misconceptions is to get educated about this vital educational tool. With that said, you now know the facts from the myths when it comes to IEPs. This knowledge isn't just beneficial for providing the best educational support for all students. It's also something you can share with other parents who might need it. In this way, we can improve our community and make advocating for our children with special needs a more straightforward process. Thank you for watching. The ultimate goal for an IEP is to provide the child with a roadmap for success. This can happen in a regular education classroom, a special education classroom, or a combination of settings. The important thing is that the child is making progress and that their unique needs are being met. For a child with learning struggles, parents can help meet those needs at home. Remember, a parent is a child's first teacher. You as a parent with the right guidance can help your child overcome learning struggles by doing simple exercises at home. How do you do that? With the Learning Success System, of course. The Learning Success System is an educational therapy program designed to help parents work with their children at home to improve foundational learning skills. It focuses on things like visual and auditory processing, 
proprioception, and spatial awareness, among others. By working on these skills, children can overcome specific learning disabilities such as dyslexia, dyscalculia, and dysgraphia, and also become more confident in their abilities. When a child has strong foundational skills, it becomes easier for them to learn and understand new concepts in school. For example, good visual tracking skills can help a child read more efficiently, while strong auditory memory skills can make it easier to follow spoken instructions. By building on these skills, using the learning success system, you can help your child become more successful in school and better equipped to handle academic challenges. And to learn more about IEPs, watch our full playlist that goes into depth on IEPs. We cover the subject deeply so you can be a fully informed parent. You can get that playlist right here.